everyone, it's Ron and Maria here with another edition of Ask Ron. Ron, mm -hmm. our first question comes in from Joseph from California. Joseph! So Joseph says, I just started and I'm trying to find out how to estimate the ARV of the properties. My estimates always turn out smaller than the asking price. What am I doing wrong? Well, first I'd say go to realestateabc.com realestateabc.com. It's a free website. It's the easiest site I've ever seen to get comps on, Joe. If you go pull it up, you'll see they're all right there on the front page and you can just go right there and see, compare them to each other. And um, what you're looking for are the top two, Joe, that like are, that are very close to your subject. The thing that you got to look at the most is the square footage because uh, they are all recent sales or they won't even be on that page. And they all, um, well, the recent sales, th the three key ingredients are recent sales, similar in uh, square footage, and close in proximity. They're all close in proximity, and they're all recent sales, so the only thing you've got to watch for is the square footage comparison. In other words, if you've got a 1,500 square foot house, Joe, you can't compare it to a 2,500 square foot house. So you just look for all of the houses that are within 100 or 200 square feet of yours and pick the top two and you can pretty much know that that's what your house is worth per square foot. If you'll, there you'll see a line there that shows what they sold for per square foot, but make sure your square footage is similar and throw away all the junk that sold for less. You're probably using distress sales for your comps and you cannot do that. I'm looking for the highest two comps that are similar in square footage on that page and that's where I'm going to get my value from by taking the dollars per square foot that they sold for, multiplying it times the number of square foot in my subject matter. I hope you got all of that, but go realestateabc.com and play with it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, and our next question is from Ken from Arizona. Hello, Ken. So Ken is dealing with a seller who is also a realtor. A seller who's also a realtor, okay. She gave me all sorts of reasons why she would not work with me, how knowledgeable she is, mm -hmm. wanted to check the Dodd-Frank Act, and told me that she would check my credit score. I stayed calm and friendly. She gave me all the information except the monthly payment she would agree on. Ken, stop. You're not going to deal with this person. You're wasting your energy. Move on. Go find somebody who actually wants to sell. I've heard enough. The minute she wants to check your credit score, we're out of here. No need to talk about that deal anymore. And our next question is right. Helen from Wisconsin. Hello, Helen. So Helen says, I have a house under contract that I was hoping to sell for cash to another investor. Okay. I have received an offer from a buyer slash homeowner with conventional financing. My contract is for $110,000 and my sale to the buyer is for $129,000. How do I close this and get paid when the buyer is using a lender? Should I show up as an entity, the closing statement between my seller and the end buyer? I am assuming I can't do a simultaneous close and have the lender fund my purchase as my company won't be in title. Well, unfortunately, Helen, you're going to have a hard time pulling that off. And I'm not telling you it's impossible, but I'm telling you at your stage of the game, it's not likely going to work out well. If you're agreeing to pay $110,000 cash and you're only getting $129,000 cash from a buyer who's paying you retail, you're agreeing to pay way too much to begin with, way too much. So the only way you can pull this off is if you sell the property and show your fee on the closing statement as a consulting fee or an option fee. But in order to do that, you're going to have to have the seller deed it directly to the buyer and then show your fee for the difference on the closing statement. You're going to have the full cooperation from the seller. The lender is going to want to see a contract from the seller to the buyer for 129. So the seller is going to have to know you're making the 19. The buyer uh, will probably know as well. So you can see the complication. Seller's got to have a contract to the buyer, which you've got to create. You got to have. You already got a contract with a seller for 110, so you can just have the closing agent show your $19,000 fee as another expense that comes out of the seller's proceeds. Again, a lot of things can go wrong in this process, um, and that is the only way you're going to handle that deal. So if you can maneuver your way through that, then God bless you. You got nothing to lose because 
if, uh, if this buyer don't go through, you're likely not to sell it anyway if I'm assuming that your ARB is only 129 and you're paying 110 for the house. And our last question comes from Marianne from California. Marianne Nunez, missed you. So Marianne has a two-part question. Okay, question she always one. does. Ron, in your big money and big chunks course, you mentioned in the script that you tell the seller that they approve the buyer. Do you still tell them that? I do not unless, Marianne, uh, we're dealing with a very high price house, couple million or million or whatever. And this, and, and I'm, it's clear to that the seller is not uh, that I'm not going to buy till I find the buyer, and I get 90 days in my agreement to do that. The seller is going to want to know what you're going to do during that 90 days and what you're trying to accomplish. In that case, if I, you know, I got to tell them that I'm going to find a tenant buyer that I want to put in the house and help them get qualified for the loan in time, then they may want to approve that tenant buyer. If they do not bring that up, then I, I'm not going to bring it up either. So. You should, maybe you should just remove that from the script because the less the seller has to approve, the better I like it. So you are correct in catching that. That was what we used to do. I don't do that anymore. I don't even offer it unless they bring it up and I can see that we're not going to do business unless I let them approve the buyer. And her second question. Mm -hmm. Here in California, the nice medium houses go for six hundred to eight hundred thousand. Uh -huh. So do I still use the scripts and process that you teach in the big money big chucks course or uh, where I don't close until I find a buyer because I don't have the funds for a high down in monthly payments the seller wants? Um, well, I don't know, Marianne. There's too many other variables on that. I don't know what script you're referring to. I'd have to look at the script and read it. And uh, you say high down and high monthly. I don't know what that means either because that's all relative. If somebody wants $25,000 down on a million dollar house, that's not really a high down payment because I know I'm going to get at least a 50 to 100 grand down when I put a tenant buyer in the house. So again, it's all relative and I don't have enough facts to give you a clear answer on that one. Sorry. And that's all we have for this week's that's Ask it. Ron. That's all you got. That's it. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Be on the lookout for an um, email coming at you because I'm going to do a Rehabbing Houses Ron's Way simulcast on the 31st of this month. And it's going to be a two-hour simulcast that I'm going to be doing here live. I just got out of the meeting where we decided to do it. And you are the very first people to hear about it. So set aside the 31st of August from 12 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Do it right now. See you soon.